Good morning, everyone. This is Bobby from the Wild Office. I want to talk to you today about series, series statements, the 490 tags. Um, I've got a few that I want to look at, one that's done correctly that I've already cleaned up, and then a number of them that need some work. So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to search for series. I usually use the title, modify title wizard, because if I'm going to be working with series, I need to use the modify title so I can actually make corrections to the bib record. So I'm going to go ahead and open modi my modify title wizard and do a search on a subject, on a series. In order for me to see the numbering of the series, I need to do it as a browse search on the series. What I'm seeing here in the window below is the cross-reference. The actual series, valid series statement is with the author title combination for this particular series heading. What I'm seeing here in the middle screen is the numbering. You only see the numbering of series if you're looking at the series through a browse series search. And here's my numbering. All done very nicely, all in order. It's lovely. This is one that I cleaned up recently, and that's why it's displaying this way. So if we wanted to look at one that's not so pretty, let's try auto undercover. Again, series search, it's a browse, so I can see the numbering, and here it is. The first several are okay. This last one here that has book number three doesn't fall into the sequence, so we're going to see why. One thing we need to do here, notice the little red check mark here next to auto undercover. That red check mark tells me that this really isn't the valid heading for this series. In order to see the valid heading, I need to come up here to my glasses, click on the toggle, and here I finally see the cross-reference. The valid heading for this is actually, again, the author title combination. So let's click on that link and see how this is really supposed to have been done. So we can see it a little bit better. I'll collapse it again. And here we have number one, number two, and book three. Let's click on this one. Okay, the series statement down here should always be in a 490, a 490 sequence. In this case, a 490 with the first indicator of one tells me that there should also be an 800 tag that gives me the author title combination for this series. This is actually what would have been called the invalid form of this series. And here is my 800. Here's my author, Rio Perlman. Here's my title again, auto undercover, and here's my series numbering. Now the thing that tells me that this is an invalid entry is my authority record. So if I go over here to display authority, the first thing I want to do is right click on it to set my properties. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm looking at descriptive labels. If I don't know what a series authority record looks like, or any authority record, I want to click on the descriptive labels. Okay, let's click on it again. And we're going to search the same series, Auto Undercover. We'll search it as an LC name. It always defaults to a browse search if you're looking at authority records. And just click Search. It brings me up into the hit list, and down here, it displays whatever it is is highlighted here in the middle. In this case, again, auto undercover has the red check mark next to it. And down here below is the authority record that goes with it. If you look at the 100 tag here, the personal name, again, this is repeating Rhea Perlman as our author. We know that she's the author of this series. She's the only author of this series which is why the series can be done as an author title combination. If a series is done under multiple authors, like the Star Trek series normally is, then it would be 
not an author title combination series heading. Out next to it, in the subfield T, right here, is our title, Auto Undercover. If we look here at a C from in this 430 tag, this is the area that creates the 490 in the bibliographic record. This is what is called the unused heading or the unvalid heading. Now, we've done something a little bit strange in the wild environment when we went with the Circe software. We made the decision to make 490 tags searchable so that a hit was retrieved. We did this so that when a user on the, pay, on the public side searched a series heading, auto undercover, we wanted them to get hits. We didn't want them to have to know about cross-references and how to figure out how to deal with a cross-reference and, and how to keep clicking. We didn't want them to have to keep clicking to find the heading. We wanted them to actually get what they were looking for at the first level. So even though I've been saying that this is an invalid heading, you are going to find the um, numbering along with it. If we go up here and go back to our modified title where our bib record is, you'll see auto undercover, just that entry itself. Now what gives us validation for how to create the numbering, again, is in our authority record. So I'm going to go back to my authority record and right down here under series numbering example, it's the 642 tag of my series authority record. It tells me right here in the first field that I can use the number sign along with the number. This is why it's important that you always look at the authority record if there is one in the WILD database to find out what the numbering actually is. In this case, that third entry we saw that had the word book in front of it, that's not a valid entry because our authority record does not give us the authority to add the word book. We do use just a number. So my authority record here tells me that that book number three is the incorrect one. So let's go back. And now we know how to do this. This is the valid, the, um, the correct way to do it. But if we have a 490 with the first indicator of one, that means we also have to have an 800 tag to go with it. And the 800 tag is here. This is the author title combination, which is the valid form as we saw in the 100 tag of our authority record. So this particular bib record has been done correctly for its series statement. If we return to search, we can look at the second one. It looks like it's displaying correctly, so it's probably been done correctly as well. But what I wanna check for on this one is to make sure that both tags are there. Here's my 490 with the first indicator of one, auto undercover, the subfield V, and the number two. That's done correctly. I look for an 800 tag, and that is also done correctly. Now, one thing I wanna mention here, this little V here is not an indication of volume. It's not the abbreviation for the word volume. It's actually a subfield code, meaning that this delimiter, this vertical bar, and the V is what the system reads here. It doesn't read the number behind it. It doesn't really care what the number is behind it. What the system is looking for is this vertical bar and the subfield code, in this case the letter V, behind it. And that, in a series statement, tells the system that this is where the numbering is going to belong. Okay, let's go back to our search hit list and take a look at this third one, because this third one is the one that has the word book in it, and that's the incorrect form. We look again for our series statement in the 490. It has an indicator of one that tells me I should have an 800 tag as well. My title is correct, but here is where my problem is. So what I'm going to do is simply remove the abbreviation for book in both places. Save my changes and that will make this series statement correct. When I return to search, I'm not gonna see it right away. Even if I were to 
refresh my screen, which I can do just by doing search, it still shows it is incorrect. That's because this is the browse index. The browse index is not recreated immediately. It has to run through a process called, an, well, basically it's an index updater. The index updater runs periodically throughout the day. So if we were to come back and look at this, maybe in as little as half an hour to an hour, this will display correctly and the changes I've made will be shown. Certainly if you don't see it later today, you will see it by tomorrow because when it goes through the overnight process, the index updater runs as part of that process. Okay, I talked about the 400s. What I want to do is go to a site, um, an OCLC mark format site, that will show you what I mean about the 400s and the 800s. This is from um, the OCLC website, the bib formats, bibliographic formats. And what I'm doing here is looking at the 4XX field. And this means it's 400s, whether it's a 490 or whatever comes after the number four. They just indicate with X's and it can be anything there. This is the introduction, of course, to that section. And what it's telling me right here at the very top is use 490 and 8XX fields for series data. Use field 490 for series statements transcribed from the item. Use 800 fields for series added entries. So the 800 field is actually the validated form of the series statement. Use field 490 for name title series statements found in retrospective cataloging copy. It continues to say trace the series in field 800, 810, 811, or 830. What I want to interject right here is um, don't worry about copying down this URL. I'll send a follow-up email out when we're finished and I'll indicate in the email what the URLs are. The last bit right here um, talks about obsolete fields in the 400 series, the 4XX series, and it says fields 400, 410, 411, and 440 are obsolete. Field 440 is also obsolete. Um, you will see records coming in from OCLC or the Library of Congress that still have these 400, 410, 411, and 440 tags on them. They need to be converted to the 490 and 800 combination that we currently use because that's the only valid series format. 440 fields can will be converted into the appropriate 490 and 830 combination. So we need to be doing that. We can't guarantee that the records coming in from OCLC or LC have already had that work done for us. Okay, let's go back to workflows and take a look at another one. Let's look at one that the colleges have been using a lot. Very short introductions. This is a series that has been coming in a lot recently, um, primarily with the colleges. Again, it's a series browse search. We have our hit list here, and they actually look pretty good. Numbering is, looks lovely, all in consecutive number order. However, we also see three out here on this first line that don't have numbering at all. So what we need to do is find out what's wrong with them. And here's my titles. What I'm going to do is go into each title and find out why there isn't numbering. Generally, um, there could be numbering already on it, and it's coded wrong. It's not done as a 440 or as a 490, or there is no numbering at all on it. Okay, we find our series statement here, and this is a 440. That's why, even though it has a number of 86, it's not displaying in that hit list. It's because it's in this invalid obsolete tag. So to fix this one, all I have to do is change this to a 490. And this one has a second indicator of zero, which isn't correct for a 490. It was valid for the 440 that we saw, but since that's an obsolete tag, this indicator is also incorrect as well. In this case, I'm going to make it a 490 with the first indicator of one and delete the second one. And here's my very short introductions. 
which is exactly what my heading should be. Since I've made this an indicator of one, that also means I need to have a series statement in the 800 tag. In this case, an 800 would have been a personal name. We don't have a personal name because these series, a very short introduction, is done by multiple authors. Therefore, we can't assign it to just one specific author. So the 800 tag, or the 8XX tag, will actually be an 830. I'm going to go down here and create it in order. And in order to simplify things, I'm just going to copy and paste it down there. In this case, this is a little strange. Um, on most of the records that are coming in with this series, it's the same series statement in both of them. It really shouldn't be the invalid form of this if we wanted to do it absolute cor absolutely correctly. It's very short introduction, and then the valid form is very short introductions, plural. So we save that, return to search, and if we wanted to look at the valid form of this, you would see that this is the valid form, very short introductions, plural. Also, this authority record has two cross-references on it. The other one is very short introduction right above it. And again, it sends us to very short introductions, the correct form. What I'm going to do is correct the other two here, and then we'll take a look at the authority record. I know I've already done this one. Now I'm going to do the second one and find out what's wrong with it. Same thing, 440 tag, the obsolete tag. We'll make the same correction here. We'll change it to a 490, make the first indicator a 1, remove that, the second indicator, and add my 830 tag. And in this case, I need to make sure, since I did copy and paste, and I still had the numbering from the other screen, I need to remember to change my numbering here. And let's do the last one. Ah, same thing. So these records came in from OCLC with an obsolete tag on them. And just for kicks, when did this come in? Okay, this came into the database a year ago, June 17th of 2010. Let's go ahead and make our change. Again, it's the same change that we made before. Ah. Here we already have our 430. So they had, whoever had done this record, whoever the cataloging body is, they did something that you wouldn't normally see. You wouldn't see a 440 plus an 830. The correct combination is a 490 and an 830 as we saw before. So this 830 is correct. Save it and return to search. Let's take a look at our authority record that goes with this one. I already have an authority wizard open, so we'll just repeat our search over here. It's a name, it's a browse, click on search, and there's our authority record. In this case, we have a green check mark next to it. That's our authority heading, our authorized heading, and right above it with the red X's are the two headings that are invalid. And if I look at my authority record down here, I will see those same two red check mark things here in the 430 tags. The 430 tags in the authority record correspond to the 490 or the 440 tags in a bibliographic record. They're in that same 4XX series. 
And here's those invalid headings, very short introduction, very short introduction series. They're both right here, very short introduction series, very short introduction. If I were to click on one of those, it would still keep me on this authority record because these cross-references refer to the authority record I'm already looking at. When I click on it, you won't see the bottom portion of the screen change. Actually, it jumped, but it's reflecting the same, same record. If you're curious about some of the other elements found here, um, this line is the publication information on the series record. It tells me that Oxford Uni University Press out of New York and Oxford, England is the primary publisher of this series. The series analysis in this 4, 644 tag, the F tells me um, that the Library of Congress which is the code, the DLC code is for the Library of Congress, they did full analysis of this. That's what the F stands for. If you ever see one there that has a P, that means they did partial analysis of the record. Or if there's an N, that means that they didn't analyze it at all. The series tracing, this is a T, meaning that it is traced. The other option there, of course, would be N for not traced. The series classification in the 646, this one is an S, meaning that the volumes are classified separately. And that means just what we've seen. There's a separate number um, for each volume, and they appear in that subfield V. This is just a non-public note. The numbering is on the spine. 670s, you can have a lot of those tags, and they tell you what source the creator of this record, which happens to be, again, the Library of Congress, what sources they used to confirm the series statements. So the first one, they used a title called Psychology, published in 1998. They took the information from the CIP on the title page where it said, a very short introduction. In 1998, or 1999, excuse me, the title Hinduism, the CIP title page, said very short introduction. So in that case, they left the initial article A off. The series title page said very short introductions. So within this book itself, there are two forms of this series statement. And they had to make a decision on how they were going to actually do it. A third source, was Jay Monahan's Social and Cultural Anthropology done in 2000. The series title page here said very short introductions. The spine gave it number 15. So that's where they initially got their numbering. And sometimes you're not always going to get the form of the series on the very first publication within the series. Because at that point, the author may not even know that he's going to be doing a series. Maybe he intended it to be a standalone title and then he decided, hey, this was kind of fun, I'll do another one. So sometimes they have to look at the second or third or even beyond. And in this case, they didn't actually see numbering until the 15th. And the last data source that they used was the Cold War, copyright 2003. Preference on this edition said, very short introduction series. So these statements here at the bottom in the 670s refer to the non-valid forms up here. The last entry, our last 670, the very short introduction series that we see here came from the Cold War done in 2003. Okay, let's go back and do one more invalid one. Um, yeah, this is a fun one. The series title. We're doing a browse search on it. Let's see what we get. Okay, not a whole lot in this one. Let's take a look at our numbering. We have 
our cross-reference here, the invalid form. But even though I've said it's invalid, we still have numbering behind it because again, as I explained, we don't want our users, if they type in this, to get just a cross-reference. We want them to be able to see what numbers go with this series heading. We've got a variety of weird things going on here that need to be cleaned up. So the first thing I wanna do is go back and look at my authority record. LC name, browse search. Okay, all I see here is my invalid form, but what it's doing automatically is displaying the valid form down here below. Again, it's an author title combination, so only this author named Hill is doing this particular series. The correct form is the author's last name, first name, middle name, and the title. The invalid forms are displayed in the 430 Extreme Mysteries and X Game Extreme Mysteries. And here's the critical thing that we were looking for. The series numbering example gives us a number sign and the number, and they actually took this from number four. So we've got a little bit of work to do. We'll go back to our bib record. And even though they always display here, in this case, as if it's done correctly, I always go in and look at it just to make sure that there isn't something else wrong with it. 490 looks good. This looks good as well. One thing I also like to do when I'm making corrections on this is to do a search on the title and see if there's any other titles out there by this author that should be in this series but aren't because maybe the 490 tag was left off or not even a 440 tag. The series statement was completely left off. So these look good. 490, first indicator one, tells me that there should be an 800 and there is, it's done correctly as well. This one is not. Remember our authority record gave us permission to add the number sign in front of our numbering. So the title is correct. It's in a 490, first indicator one, extreme mysteries. What I'm gonna do is add my number sign. And down here, 800, first indicator one, author's name, extreme mysteries, have to add the same thing here. And save. Number six is the same way, so I'll quickly correct that one. 490, ah, oh, this is different. This is a 490 with an indicator zero. Now this tells me that this won't have an 800 tag to go with it. This would be, um, a 490 with an indicator of zero means that it's supposed to be untraced. And in this case it is because there's no 800 to go with it, no valid entry form. A 490 with an indicator one, would, as we saw before, tells me that it's traced, um, there's a heading for it, but it's traced differently. And that's where you see the 490 with an indicator one followed by the 800 that we saw on the previous record. So this has a couple of things that need to be corrected. I need to correct the indicator, make it a one, put the number beside it so it's correct, and now I have to come down here and add the 800 tag. And what I'm gonna do is just go up and copy and paste this guy. and add my subfield T and copy and paste this information as well. And now I've had my, I have my valid series headings. I created a 490 with an indicator of one that tells me that I should have an 800 and I do because I just added it and it's added correctly. This one 
has a zero in front of it. None of the others do. So what I'm going to do here is get rid of that zero. The system doesn't need a leading zero in order for these numbers to file in the correct order. So all I need to do here is get rid of that and get rid of it here as well. And we've got one more. Let's take a look at it. Okay, my 490, first indicator is one. Everything looks good. My 800 also looks good. So we're done. That series looks pretty good. One thing we might want to look at though, let's go back up here to our invalid form. Click on our little binoculars, or our little glasses actually, to toggle back so we can see the entry, the valid entry from the 800 tag. This is a link, so all I have to do is click on it and it will take me into the index under the author's name. Okay, we see our bib record here. Click on the little glasses again. And these still look jumbled. That's because, again, as I mentioned before, these aren't going to display correctly until the index updater runs. But here you can see what the entry is. Here's the 800 entry that we saw in number two, the 800 entry for number four, the 800 entry for number five, and so on. So we corrected all of these. Okay, we might have one more. This one is a state document, um, and we're not gonna look at all of it but I just found something interesting when I was doing some research on these. And this would be a quick cleanup. It takes longer to type the name than it is going to clean it up. Okay, Wyoming State Geological Survey Mineral Report as a series browse. And all I really want to show you here is this first one, MR94-5. The next one is MR02-2. The reason this one is displaying out of order is because of the space right here. So if we go in and make that correction, it'll fall into place in the correct order. So really there are some things in the series statements areas that just by looking at the hit list you can clean up right away. Took out the space here and then in this entry they don't use the MR. You just save it, and now when the index updater runs again, this will be in order. Um, let's do one more. Dragonology Chronicles. Okay, there's not a lot of these, as you can see. There's only two here. Again, we need to look at our authority record to find out which is the valid way to do this. Open our display authority and search. Okay, here's our authority record. Little green check mark again. We'll take a look at it down here. 130 tag. This was a, a really good example actually because this isn't what we've seen before. This is um, a series statement for a series that could be written by different authors. So they haven't assigned a particular author to the series statement. And that's why we're seeing a 130 tag here for the uniform title instead of the 100 that we saw in all of the other examples. So our valid form is the uniform title dragon Chronicles and our numbering example is V period space 1 so anything other than that would be incorrect. Okay let's go back and we know we're using just the lowercase v the space and the number. Uh, something else we need to look at though in our authority record we only have volumes 2 and 3 so what did they base their authority record on? They based it down here, source data found in the 670 tag, 
for a book called The Dragon's Eye, published in 2006. The series title page said Dragonology Chronicles. Okay, this makes me curious. The Dragon's Eye should be a part of this series, but when I go back to my list of series, this isn't here. So I'm going to find out if we actually have this title in our database or if we do not. And I'm going to open another window, modify title, and do a search on Dragon's Eye. It's a keyword search on the title. I want to make sure I did it. Dragon's Eye, okay. Let's take a look and see if it's in our hit list. And we've got a couple of them. We could look at all of them, but I happen to know right now that the ones I'm looking at are by Author Steer. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Ah, here's our problem. It does have the series tracing, but it's done in a 440. So it's not even pulling up it up at all in our series hit list. If I were to change this to a 490, and we'll do it as an indicator of one, since our authority record doesn't have an initial article on it, I'll get rid of that. And we don't have an 01, we have the period space one. Now this looks a little strange here because you've got the V period for the volume designation, but you also have the lowercase v in front of it. Remember that lowercase v in front of it, right here, those two elements, create the subfield that the numbering goes in. So we have subfield v followed by v period space one for the actual numbering. And down here, we'll create our 800 tag. In this case, it's an 830, second indicator zero. And we can just copy this down there. Oops. Control V to put it in place. And now we've added the series numbering and the series statement in correct format for a dragon's eye. And as we saw, it wasn't displaying at all in our series hit list. If we go back to that, you don't see volume one here at all. So let's take a look at volume three. It looks like it's done correctly, but we need to make sure that both tags are there. Ah, the 490 is there, Dragonology Chronicles, volume three. However, they've done this incorrectly because they're making it an author title combination. When in fact, from our authority record, if you recall, it was not an author title combination. Just to refresh my memory, if I go back and look at it, here's my authority record, right? It's a 130, Dragonology Chronicles. So the author's name should not be associated with it. And what we have to change here is the 800. It becomes an 830 second indicator. All of this is correct, but the beginning of it is not. So I'm going to take out the author's name and the subfield T for the title. And now it's done correctly. One more, volume two, and in this case they spelled the word um, VOL, abbreviated as VOL. Okay, here's our 490. It's done as VOL here. We know it's not supposed to be. We change it to V period space two. And down here again, they, it's been done as an 800 instead of the correct format. So I change those two things. Might as well change this while I'm over here. V period space two, and then get rid of the author and the subfield T. We're done.
with this record. And I think we're done with our examples. Again, if you go back in later today and look at this, you'll see these done in the correct format and you will see volume one added here as well. Okay, and that's I think about all I can talk about. So are there any questions? Uh, you can type them in now or you can just email them to me later. Okay. If we don't have any questions, we can go ahead and stop now. And um, if you think of something later, just send me an email, bobby.thorpe at wyo.gov. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>